This is Meg, Amy, Beth, and Joe. I'm working on a novel. It is a story. Of well, you read the book, you can't wait for the movie, you know, like Little Women, but does the adaptation hold up to the hype of the book? Critic, editor, author, and film editor for The Wrap, Kristen Lopez has a book looking at some of the best and worst book-to-film adaptations of all time. It's called, But Have You Read the Book? <laughs> and Kristen joins us live. Kristen, thanks for Hi. being with us. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here. So I'm sure there's some books that were better than movies. And I, I, I'm curious, let's just, let's just start with Jaws. I think people forget that was a novel by Peter Benchley. Yeah, they do. And it's a real shame. I know people say the book isn't nearly as good as Jaws, but how can you compete with Spielberg? You're going to fail every time. But I think the book is fascinating in its own way and how it looks at the shark is kind of a metaphor. There's a lot of class and elitism, illicit affairs. It's a fun read, regardless of how it stacks up against a classic like the film. Yeah, I'm sure some some movies mirror the book and others are, are very, very different, as you say. Let's look at Jurassic Park. How yeah, Jurassic Park is one of those. I love it just as much as the movie. I think you can read the book and still get a truly cinematic experience because Michael Creighton is an icon of an author on his own. But it's got characters that die that don't die in the movie. John Hammond, the cuddly grandfather creator of Jurassic Park, is the villain in the book, which is a huge change. Uh, but it's still so much fun to read. And The Princess Bride, I, I, I guess I forgot that was a book as well. Yeah, it's actually a really fascinating book because a lot of people considered it unfilmable because of how it's structured. It's very meta. There's an author within the story commenting on the tale that is being told. There's an entire zoo of death that unfortunately Rob Reiner couldn't film in the movie. And it really is a great example of how you can play with how a book is written and add your own commentary to it. And it's so much fun. Hmm. All right, next uh, film that was a book, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. You know, Roald Dahl did not like the film with Gene Wilder. He didn't think Gene Wilder played the character right. And it's a shame because I think the movie is a blast and, and Gene Wilder is perfect. But the book is very much a cautionary tale. And Roald Dahl really makes it kind of grim. The, the Tim Burton film is a bit closer to Dahl's novel, but really, I think the 71 film, despite what Roald Dahl said, does get the tone right. It is kind of grim, kind of mm. dark, and does supposedly teach children uh, some life lessons. All right, how about The Color Purple? The Color Purple is such a beautiful, beautiful book. Steven Spielberg was very hesitant to take it on. He understood that he was not a Southern person he was a white man and alice walker the author of the book watched et and felt that he would be the right person for the film and i really think he works so wonderfully with the material he does tamp down a bit of a same-sex relationship that happens in the book which he did say later he regretted but i think he really understood walker's prose and this deeply intense and personal story of a black woman really coming into her own all right, and Gone Baby Gone. It didn't get to include it in the book, which was sad because it's my favorite. I wish that I could have gotten it in there. And it's one of those examples that I always cite where the book is so fantastic. The movie is equally good, but I do wish that the original ending of the novel had been retained. Uh, ben Affleck's film doesn't keep the original ending, which ends on a bit of a more ambiguous note than the film does. But there's still a really, really good pairing. They're two halves of a whole that I wish I could have included in the novel, but they told me I had way too many crime and mystery films, so I had to had to cut it. You say there's a, one of them that I, I wanted to get this one, the best film from a bad book, American Psycho. That was a bad book, huh? Uh, you know, I don't think it's as good as the movie. I know Brett Easton Ellis 
does not like the film, and I wish he did, because I think that the film really does understand the dark satire that the book has. There's a lot of dark comedy in the film, uh, and I think it's timeless. It's a movie made in the 2000s about the 1980s, but you can watch it in 2023 and still understand the themes of toxic masculinity and classism and capitalism that's all there. And I think the book is certainly worth the read, but for me, I always say I prefer the film. All right, well, Kristen, it's a pleasure to talk to you. For more with Kristen, you can check her out on social media platforms. Thanks for being with Thank us. Thank you.